So last time we went over the T and B factors. Today we'll talk about torsion. First, we are going to start with a smooth curve in a space. So let's say it looks something like this. And let's say here is the point of consideration. I'm going to first draw the unit tangent factor. That's T, which is represented by our index finger. And then N will be going like that, right? The unit normal factor. And lastly, once you hold up your thumb like that, that is the unit binormal factor. And B is defined to be the cross product of T and N. All right, now the torsion is the following. Just hold up your hand like this. And then when you travel along the curve, sometimes you may turn like this, sometimes you may turn like that, sometimes you go up, sometimes you go down, right? The amount of twisting or how much your body is rotating, and I'm talking about the unit binormal factor, the B right here, that is the torsion. And the way I like to think about it is, just imagine that you're riding a roller coaster. You are right here, sitting up straight. This is the unit binormal factor, and that's you. When you go up, you feel like this, right? So when you go up, the, the curve is like this. And once you go down, you feel like that, right? And then sometimes you will turn this way, sometimes you will turn that way, and sometimes it, like the exciting ones, you go like that. It's the amount of twisting that you are experiencing. The amount of twisting that's happening for the unit binormal factor. So let me just write this down right here. The torsion is how much twisting that you are getting for B. That is the idea. And this is different than the curvature. And let me just remind you guys this real quick. Curvature, which is denoted by kappa, and this is defined to be the magnitude of the derivative of the unit tension factor with respect to S. Now, we are talking about torsion. This right here, we are going to use the Greek letter tau. This is defined to be negative, and the negative is because just tradition, right? And you are going to see why later on. And here we have the derivative of B with respect to S. And here we do the dot product with the unit normal factor. And that is the definition of the torsion. And let me just give you guys a quick comparison, and I'm going to use the example that we did last time, which is, let's consider our good old friend, y is equal to x squared. And notice, this is just a plain curve. And last time, we considered the point 1, 1. So I will remind you, at 1, 1, we found our curvature kappa, which was 2 over square root of 125. And this right here tells you how much the curve is bending at this point. Now, let me ask you, can we figure out what tau is, the torsion at this point, without doing any computation? Well, let's just think about it. Again, hold out your hand like this, and we are traveling along the curve like this. Is B twisting, moving, rotating? No. So, in fact, right here, tau is going to be zero. In fact, when we have a plane curve, for any plane curve, the torsion is just going to be zero. Just imagine that you're driving on a flat surface, flat road. You're driving, right? You're dri driving. No matter how you turn, you have different curvature, but you are always going to sit up straight. You are not going to be twisting around. So the torsion is just always going to be zero when we have a plane curve. And here's the deal though, for, uh, for the torsion. Well, here's one thing that I'm going to show you guys after this board, all right? One thing that I will show you is that this came from 
the fact that when we take a look at the derivative of b with respect to s. In fact, this right here is a constant multiple, and the constant we write here as negative tau times the unit normal factor. So it's a scalar multiple. And this is quite similar to if you look at the curvature the following way. Let me remind you guys, when we have the unit normal factor, this right here is defined to be 1 divided by the curvature kappa times the derivative of the unit tangent factor with respect to s. This right here is the derivative of the unit tangent factor with respect to s, which because t has constant length, so this thing will be normal to t. So that's why it's a normal factor, but we only need to be unit, right? So we divide it by its magnitude, and that's exactly what kappa is, the magnitude of this thing. So we can ensure that n is a normal factor. The unit factor, sorry, the length is equal to 1. And now, if I just multiply the kappa on both sides, then we can see that dt ds is equal to kappa times the unit normal factor. So I think they are quite similar, huh? So we went over this already. Now let me show you guys why this is true. 